called me and asked me if I was coming home to pay my respects when my uncle Luis died. I said, I don't know, ma'am. What are they serving? <laughs> if it's an open basket, I come in. <laughs> if not, no. Nah. <laughs> no, nah, I love my mom. A little bit about myself is that the, I'm the youngest of eight children. Hey, yeah. My mom, actually, she got birth to me when she was 49 years old. I know. <laughs> I said, I say, mom. <laughs> My first name should be menopause. <laughs> I don't know what they put me, Adri. <laughs> when the doctor told her she was pregnant with me, she said, that, no, I was suspecting menopause. But instead, she got me. <laughs> Literally, my mom, I don't remember, but my mom used to talk to me as a baby because she told me that. that they, she said that they, I used to talk to you as a baby, that they, you were an accident. But I'm still planning to give you love and using a dysfunction to make you funny. Turns out, they give me tons of dysfunction. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> but they never planned I'm going to make fun of it. The other day I told my family I'm going to be an American comedian. They laugh. <laughs> this is I knew I had made the best career choice. <laughs> they told me, are you crazy? You don't even get the English. I said, who cares? I'm going to be the first one to get the job. <laughs> and I get it. <laughs> Did you get it? Did you understand me? <laughs> I just asking if you understand me. <laughs> because I am still having a lot of trouble understanding and communicating with people in English. Honestly, I found out that the further I'm away from Mexico, the more times a person has to explain something to me. El Paso, Texas. They say it once. And I get it. Denver, Colorado, probably two, three times. But no matter how many times <laughs> somebody explained it to me, I never understand anything if you are from Boston. <laughs> well, I can park my car. <laughs> probably <laughs> I just speak the same as they. Probably you cannot understand me. It's because I'm from Boston. No, I'm still Mexican. I'm still Mexican. I, go, I actually, a few months ago, this is sad because I went to an audition for Mexicans. They were looking for Mexicans. And I didn't get selected because they thought I was faking to be a Latina. So now I need to build a reputation if I want to be like a, a, a famous stand-up comedian, right? <laughs> I, I need to build a reputation, OK? <laughs> That's why. Now, I sell drugs <laughs> to your kids. <laughs> Look at me outside. <laughs> and I do drugs <laughs> with your kids, too. Uh, no, I, I can't. Where are you from, guys? Where are you from? What? Brooklyn? Oh, so you just came to... To see me? Uh, <laughs> no, I know that you, you were... She was performing before. She was so good. Honestly. Uh, Janet, right? Yeah. I was like, oh, I want to sing. I don't sing at all. I just can't scream as a Mexican. <laughs> like, oh! <laughs> it's all what I can do. <laughs> no, also, I don't know. Like, Where are you from, guys? You, where? The countryside. What country? Corny. Okay. Cool. Welcome to New York City. Um. So other thing about myself. <laughs> For example, my mom. I will never forget my first period. My whole family applauded me. And my mom said that day, today you are a woman. A little bit different now. On my last period, my mom still applauded me. But because I'm not pregnant. <laughs> but that will never happen, guys. You can stay, it's free. Eh? 
<laughs> you can stay, honestly. It's free. <laughs> so <laughs> I that, I told my mom that they will that will never happen because I use the best beer control ever invented. I am working as a nanny. <laughs> After working with these little brags, I don't wanna have kids on my own. So my boyfriend is mad with me <laughs> because I don't let him come inside me. I don't even let him come in. <laughs> I call him like, are you done? Go and take a shower and they come in. <laughs> no, I love my boyfriend. This other thing about Mexico is that, they, for example, in Mexico, people from my country, in Mexico, they get married for love. Here in America, <laughs> They get married for green cards. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet. But I'm lucky that my boyfriend paid for my metro car. <laughs> so I got a metro car. <laughs> American dream. <laughs> no. I don't know, guys. Are you happy to be here? Because I'm happy to be here. In your country. <laughs> no, I really am happy to be here, guys. I'm glad that you stay here to watch a pretty amazing comedy show. Um, I don't know what to tell you guys. Let me see. The, oh, I can I can tell you about my uh, about uh, how we look. So everybody in my family is funny, but I'm the only one professionally funny. So I'm home. I'm the headliner. <laughs> you need to know that we are 10, like at two parents, eight kids. Everywhere we were. Like a, when we get out of our minivan, we look like a clown car. <laughs> you didn't know how many funny people were about to come out. <laughs> there is coming one. <laughs> There is coming two. There is coming three. By the time I came out, they expected me to be juggling. <laughs> there is coming ten. Ah, that's me. <laughs> no, honestly, one time we got into a little car accident. Our car break down in the middle of the road. We have to take three taxis to get us back home. My dad was so mad. Can you believe it? There is no clown taxis. <laughs> and I checked my phone is that and it's not Uber clown yet. <laughs> you wanna pull? <laughs> I love that job. My dad <laughs> My dad is very controlling man. So as a matter of fact, being controlling, he just bought a large cemetery plot so the whole family can be buried together. I'm trying to be an independent woman, but looks like not in this life. I'm probably not even in the next one. Uh, you're staying with us. <laughs> my dad. When I was little, I was literally in love with my dad. My mom was my best friend and my dad was my first love. I adore my father. That's why when my mom told me where babies come from <laughs> and how she got pregnant, <laughs> I said, how could you? I thought you were my best friend. <laughs> uh, do you wanna know something about my boyfriend? Okay, first, my family don't like my boyfriend, honestly. Like, uh, my mom just tried to give me an advice to search for the perfect man. She said that they make sure he has a job, he knows how to cook, and he can give you orgasms. I don't know if she's trying to protect me or complaining about my dad. <laughs> Because I know that my dad has a job, he knows how to cook, but the third one I don't want to know. <laughs> Want to know something like that. <laughs> um, you realize that after, after Donald Trump said he was going to build a wall to export got very popular in Mexico? 
rock climbing and pole vaulting. We are not worried. We're going to get over it. <laughs> uh, what else? Where are you from? Where are you from? California. California. Yay. You see, I want to go to LA. What part of California you live? Oakland. Oakland? Yeah. I had family in Sacramento, California. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I don't know what I am doing here. <laughs> no, I love America. I really love being here. But a few months ago, actually, I went to visit my family back in Mexico. Okay, technically I was deported, <laughs> but as you can see, I'm back, <laughs> so don't worry about me. I'm okay. <laughs> okay, guys, are you ready for an amazing show? Yeah! yeah. Our first comedian, uh, it was me. <laughs> Our second comedian, give it up for Connor! Woo! Give it up for our host, Audrey, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Give it up for our wait staff as well. Be sure to tip them. Thank you. That's how you get claps up top. All right. I like to start out uh, with an impression. All right. Here's an impression of me going on a date. She canceled. <laughs> All right. We got Brooklyn in the house, right? We got Callie in the house. I am from New Hampshire. Very convenient. State motto, live free or die. Two great choices. But we put that on our license plates, which seems like a bad challenge for drunk drivers. I love license plate models. They're like, Oklahoma puts on their license plates. Oklahoma is okay. That's true. But my favorite is Idaho. They put, no, Utah. <laughs> that's not true. They put potatoes. And that's far worse. But, like, I wish it was Utah. Like, I wish more license plates were saying, like, I wish I was just driving down the road and I saw Tennessee. Nah, more like a seven. Do we all see Star Wars Episode Nine here? Yeah, no, doesn't really matter. It was a fine movie, fine at best. I, I went to see Star Wars Episode Seven though, and that movie was amazing, amazing. I was in a packed theater, and 40 minutes in, this dad in the very front row stands up, turns to his son, and goes, whoops, you pooped your pants, and left. And that is the best part of the entire Star Wars saga. <laughs> True story. But what gets me, what gets me is his dad didn't need to stand up. Right? He didn't need a better perspective. He wasn't like a pirate climbing the crow's nets to search for land. He didn't need to put on a show. No. But if he did, he could have done so much better. He could have been like, looky here, folks, we got ourselves a storm pooper. Yucky. <laughs> I like silly stuff. I, I really do. Uh, you know, my favorite words to say ends with B, right? You can say these with me if you want after the first time. We got nib, nub, knob, rob, lob, blob. A lot of fun. Try with me. Nib, nub, all right, good work, good work. I love, I love words that end with B, but not silent B. No, those are dumb. <laughs> In old movies, people used to insult each other by spelling. They'd be like, that man's a pig, a P-I-G pig. But I'm worried if that comes back into vogue and I got to insult someone, I'll be like, that guy's dumb. D U M. Dumb. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> I like silly stuff. Uh, I, I actually moved from New Hampshire to New York eight months ago. And uh, back in December, I saw a miracle. A miracle. I was on 48th and Broadway, 
And I saw a man texting and driving a horse. A horse. A miracle. Something you see in nature that's inexplicable. I saw a man committing a 21st century crime with an 18th century mode of transportation. A miracle. But that's when I realized that's why we have horse cops. Car cops for cars, horse cops for horses, bike cops for Lance Armstrong. But the horse looks so sad. And that's when I realized that's why we should have horse therapists. Are you feeling better? Yay or nay? <laughs> I like it. You're having fun. <laughs> you ever notice uh, on the subway when the autom automated voice comes on as the doors are closing, it always says the same thing, right? It always says, stand clear of the closing doors, please. Because if the MTA subway is anything, it's polite. That's why people walk on, they're like, I'm sorry, I don't mean to bother you. <laughs> I swear, I was on the subway the other day and I got on, and some man walked on and just went, I'm Jesus Christ. And I was like, whoa, was that you texting and driving the horse? Uh, New York, New York, what a fun, fun state. Um, I, I went on a date and my date said, mmm, my spirit animal is coffee. Now I'm no zoologist, but that date was over. Some, some dog owners treat their dogs like children. Right? And that makes no sense to me because children come from human vaginas and dogs come from Sarah McLaughlin's sad songs. But, but, at my best, at my best, Hotel RL, I am indifferent about dogs. And some people are like, boo! And that's my impression of a dyslexic cow. But, when people are like, hey, Connor, how do you not love dogs? Dogs love unconditionally. I'm like, yeah, but we feed dogs and give them everything they want. You know who would love you unconditionally if you fed them and gave them everything they want? Connor, a human. Oh, <laughs> I do. Oh, man. We all, are we all a fan of books here? We all read Harry Potter? No, are oh, we not pot, potheads in the house? No, no potheads here. <laughs> I did. <laughs> if you're not familiar, like, I, I love Harry Potter. Like, I'm a huge, like, I want my kids to grow up believing that Harry Potter and the world of Hogwarts is real, right? I want to give them their books real young, like five years old. And when they become the right age, let's say ten and a half, 11, we send them a letter saying they got into Hogwarts. And then we fly to London, get our supplies, go to King's Cross Station, then just watch them run right into the wall. Yeah. Say, so Harry, it's not a pothead house. <laughs> it's not. It's I, I tried, but, you know, sometimes... <laughs> Harry Potter? The, uh, King's Cross Station Platform 9 and 3 quarters? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. It's, you're, you're a pothead? You are? Oh. <laughs> oh that's fun. You're fun. Are you, do you, have you heard about Virgin Galactic? It, okay. It's this company that's going to be flying people into space. Right? You're going to be taking off from the ground, going into suborbital orbital space, right? And it's going to start happening this summer, 2020. And tickets are 
$250,000 a seat. $250,000. Like, it's nuts. But I can't tell you how excited I am for that first flight to go missing. Like, people went nuts over Malaysia 370. That plane went missing in the ocean. Just think about when we lose a place in a plane in space. It's nuts. But it's $250,000 a seat. So it's like only the 1% can really afford it. So if that plane goes missing, it kind of feels like Bernie Sanders' final solution. It's a, it's a dark. I... The, the Virgin Galactic reminds me a lot of the Titanic, right? Because uh, if it goes missing, it parallels it there, right? <laughs> uh, but the only reason the Titanic is successful is because it hit an iceberg and sank. Like, if you went up to someone the day after the Titanic was supposed to make it across the ocean, April 17th, 1916, and were like, hey, uh, heard about that Titanic, made it across the ocean. You'd be like, yeah, like every ship should. But they're remaking the Titanic. They're calling it the Titanic 2. It's going to set sail in 2022. Same build, same route. And that ship will never be successful because global warming has melted all the icebergs. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to get a little personal with you uh, about a year and a half ago, I lost my grandmother. Um, and this is, this is 100% a true story. Um, at my grandmother's funeral, it was a beautiful and solemn event. And we had a moment of silence after we lowered her remains into the ground. And to break that moment of silence, my grandmother's 92-year-old friend said, Well, see you soon true story and you don't know how uncomfortable it is to laugh at your own grandmother's funeral uh, I, I've been thinking a lot about this and I'll leave you with this thought to ponder upon but I, if, you, if we had to keep the name a dog's biological parents gave them it'd be rough rough thank you very much Hotel RL give it up for Brooklyn in the house Give it up for Audrey, our host. <laughs> Hello again. So I was thinking what else to tell you, and I came with a bunch of ideas, even if, <laughs> even if you are not listening to me. This is, this is funny. Listen to this, guys. <laughs> so... I'm so frustrated dating here in New York because in Mexico, I'm one in a million because I'm white. <laughs> Over here is like a camouflage. <laughs> yeah, so dating here is tough. Even if I had my boyfriend, honestly, all my boyfriend and ex-boyfriends are like a, a free trials. They only last like a 30 days. <laughs> I love that joke too, guys. <laughs> I just love that. Um, what else? Ah, uh, yeah. I'm frustrated with the movies of Disney, the Cinderella, for example. Every Disney movie, it's like a frustrated. Cinderella made me more frustrated because she dropped the shoe in the middle of the stairs and the princess, the prince found her. If I drop my shoe when running out to catch my train in the stairs of the subway, like I don't think that I'm going to see my shoe or him again. <laughs> but I have a near thing. I put an insurance car over there. <laughs> Call me if you found it. <laughs> because I'm the universal size 7. So he's not going to find me. First he's going to get married with somebody else. I just love the attention, guys. I love the attention. So, <laughs> so, 
So this is you want to listen a funny story? Yes. Okay, I will. <laughs> I will tell you a funny story. So in Mexico, um, I blend Mexican culture culture that uh, is so difficult for me dating because honestly, my relationship don't last long. The uh, what is it? The bathrooms are over here. Over here. You <laughs> do you want a bathroom joke? No, it's not a bathroom joke. Okay, it's a little bit. <laughs> so, hey, how are you guys? Welcome. Are you coming to see comedy or are you coming to perform? You coming to perform? Okay, cool. Welcome. Uh, they are performing too. So, yeah. <laughs> We we have a lot of attention, so you can like, uh, oh, let's try it. If you had feedback, you can give me feedback. Uh, <laughs> any feedback? Uh, no, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, guys. Okay, um, the bancor. Are you ready for the bancor? <laughs> Woo! I said it right. Yeah, you said it right. Uh, give it up for your host. Oh yeah. Uh any anyone here uh huge caffeine fans? I'm not uh I, I don't have caffeine often. Uh yeah, and, and I just had some green tea. I I'm I'm feeling amped up. Yeah. I I just gotta get this off my chest. I, I don't I, I don't feel comfortable going down water slides. It's it's terrifying. Uh, it's because I'm a C-section baby. You know, the road less traveled. Yeah. But the worst part is, like, right before the water slide, there's always this one guy. One guy. He says, make sure you keep your feet in front. I'm like, really, dude? Really? That That's exactly what happened the first time. That's what got me into trouble. You know? Oh, man. Sorry, I'm taking a picture. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah, just, what's up? Nothing? I, I love how, like, everyone, everyone just paid attention. That, that was awesome. I, I, I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little bit about myself. My name is The Boncor. Uh, white people call me Derek. Yep. Uh, black people call me uh, the fuck who. <laughs> yep. That that's that's. I, I I understand that my name is ridiculous. Like like this one time a guy asked me, "Hey, is the Bancor a a common name in India?" It isn't. It's just a difficult name for for all the races, really. It's just an equal opportunity name, you know. Yeah. But 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 really like, like for me, I th I think my name turned me into a genius. Like in kindergarten. Like, when I was in kindergarten, all the other kids were spelling like Dan or Dave. Meanwhile, genius here, I was spelling the word the Boncor. That's three syllables deep and two thirds of the alphabet. Yeah, dude, you you guys wonder why Indian kids are wizards at spelling bees. It's because our parents just start us off at like champion level words, dude. Yeah, and guess what? I spelled Dan and Dave's name in my name. Yeah, dude. Yeah, just just to bring it back to to a lighter lighter subject. <laughs> have Have you guys ever been called a terrorist at a TSA? No, me neither, dude. <laughs> Turns out people are super nice. <laughs> you know, like 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 the officer even gave me like a hug, like he hugged me, but th th he reached a little little low, and but th but then he invited me over to this place where I was randomly selected, and I'll tell you what, uh, the dogs there, they loved me. It was a great time. Yeah, super awesome. 
<laughs> kind of like this time right now. Enjoying every moment right now. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. She's whoever, whoever's laughing, thank you. <laughs> laughing in the back right there. Yeah, but uh, I, I was born in India. Uh, moved here when I... Hell yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't... I usually... <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, I, I'm an immigrant, and people usually clap for that. I'm like, w are you clapping? Because, like, now, like, I, I've lowered the Indian population by, like, one? Like, is this quality control? Like, what's going on here? But yeah, yeah, I... I'm an immigrant, and uh, I'm also multilingual, which I don't really know why people find that impressive, because uh, all that means to me is that my conscience terrorizes me in multiple different languages. Yeah, the, yeah. The the worst one's Japanese, though, because uh, uh, I don't even know that one. <laughs> Just get flashbacks of a war I was never in. You know? Yeah. There's this one time they're like. Yeah, dude, I'm serious. Like, there's a guy speaking right now. He's going like, "Watashi o si." You think I know what that means? <laughs> no, there's just a guy in my head saying that. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I, I moved here when I was four, and uh, it was a huge culture shock. And uh, my parents they tried to make me feel super comfortable by uh, adding to that shock and placing me in Catholic school. Uh, in case you guys didn't have eyes, this face, not Catholic. Yeah, man. They put me in there because it was like a good spot in like a not so great neighborhood, and it worked out. I, I was never worried about getting like bullied or robbed, uh, but I was deeply terrified by the fact that the devil now watches me. Yeah, you guys know about that devil guy? Yeah? No? Well, he's not fond of some of his own people. So he's not going to like some brown Hindu kid going into his favorite work spot, you know, Catholic school. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was born Hindu, but uh, I grew up afraid. See, that's also scary. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just got scared by the cops. But yeah, like what scared me, like one of the first times in school, like there was a teacher that said, hey, there's a mock communion here. I was like, okay. And then I come in, and she's like casually saying, hey, uh, we're just going to have some Jesus blood. Like, what? Does Jesus know about this? So, like, how much blood does that guy have? That's a, that's a long line. You know? Yeah, I, my mom doesn't allow me to have caffeine, as I said earlier. And, uh, yeah, Jesus blood was off the table. But I, 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 I did have the bread once, though, and that, that was Okay. It was a tortilla chip at best, you know? Which in that case, I think Jesus' blood should be salsa. Because that, that's a great combination right there. No, no one here likes salsa? No? Do you like salsa? Yeah? Don't you think it would be better than wine and then, like, just a cracker? It's, it's, it's too... It's, it's, it's not as, as coercive as, like, dude, chip and dip, so satisfying. Just the crunch, like, <laughs> so satisfying. Yeah. You know, like, Jesus' blood is all right, but uh, Jesus' blood is delicious. Hell yeah. She gets it. <laughs> the, the only person that should get it, right? <laughs> yeah. But, dude, salsa, salsa and, and, and chips would be so much better. So much better. But yeah, the, what actually scared me though was like the crucifix, like you know, you know, like Jesus getting nailed to the cross. It's so scary, like just troubling even. And it, immediately I was thinking, what if one of the Hindu gods went through this, you know, like Shiva or Ganesh? Uh, first of all, you would need way more nails. That's a lot of hands right there, you know. Which, which in that case, like it's it's not even a cross anymore. You know? Not really a crucifix. More like a asterisk. Yeah. I'll 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 leave you guys with like a like like a thing where 
I shouldn't really leave you off at. It's like a cliffhanger. But find out on the on the next show <laughs> of, of this show, hosted by Audrey Mora. Um, <laughs> that wasn't even the joke, but I'll take it. I'll end strong. Give it up for your host, Audrey Mora. Go thank yourselves. Have a great time. Remember me like a. So, this is the thing. Growing up, you didn't hear, but we are eight kids in my house, like uh, my, and my parents, so we are 10 people in my house. And growing up in a house with eight kids and only one bathroom, we used to play a lot of games. My favorite racing to the toilet <laughs> many times I lose <laughs> I pee myself so often but at least waiting for my turn and learn pee pee dance <laughs> that is not that difficult that the Mexican traditional dance <laughs> I also Mexican you miss that <laughs> uh, I used to in the school guys yeah, I go into a school. I said go into a school N Y E A. Nobody knows what it is. But yeah, I just remember because you say about Japanese that the the language Japanese. So growing growing up <laughs> like I go into this school right now at my school is full of Japanese people. Yeah. The other day we went to a field trip and the tour guy was telling my friends from Japan how amazing Japanese culture is that they actually she's learning a lot about Japan watching this new TV show Tokyo Girl on Netflix she noticed me and said that where are you from I said from Mexico <laughs> just that oh I haven't watched Narcos yet <laughs> but it's in my queue <laughs> she's going to learn a lot about Mexico <laughs> I hate stereotypes honestly like uh, everybody like uh Things are the stereotypes I found, but I just hate when the people do stereotypes. Um, what about myself? Are you ready, Alex? Because I'm, I don't know what else to say. That if. I can tell you that, if, for example, in Mexico, like um, with my family, uh, every time that we get something new, we use it until we literally cannot use it anymore. That makes it so difficult to ask for new things, even if you really, really need it. One time, I was <laughs> 15 years old, <laughs> and I finally got the guts to ask my dad for a new bed. He looked at me up and down. How tall do you say you are? I said, a little more than four feet. And, she, and he said, that, okay, lay down, lay down in your bed. And I lay down in my bed. You see, you still fit in your creep. Just curl up a little. I couldn't wait for my first nephew to be born. And I could get rid of my creep. All my clothes I inherited from my seven older siblings. Yeah. I never had the chance to get new clothes. Even my sister, Chira, printed underwear. By the time I got them, they were all stretched out. They look more like a Girard printed parachute. <laughs> Free ride! <laughs> I used to love to go shopping with my mom because I got the opportunity to pick out what clothes I was going to wear in seven years. <laughs> okay, are you ready, Alex? Give it up for Alex! Woo! Give it up for your host, everyone. It's a fun show. Do you think if I just took this and put it over here and just sort of did my set out this window, eventually one of those weightlifters like just would fall in love with me, and we we just have something going on here? Like because I don't know, we're we're both just out here doing sets. Wow, what a wow, <laughs> yeah. Oh no, um, but I am. You know, I'm thinking about love recently. Love. Right. Yeah, clap for love. Come on. <laughs> love, it's a crazy thing, love. 
I'm seeing this girl at the moment, and, you know, it's just making me feel all these new feelings. It's like, if anything ever happened to her, uh, I'd, I'd have to date someone else. Mm. And, I don't know, okay, so that's kind of a harsh opinion, right? Especially for someone who one week ago was crying on the G train about a one-month relationship. And that's the gentleman's train. You can't cry on that train. But it's just this internal struggle I hold. Especially, she's like so adult. And I, I don't know. I just don't. I, I have it in numbers. I just don't have it in attitude. And, you know, she's the sort of person I feel like I'm meant to take to the Guggenheim and to plays and stuff. And I'm the sort of... I, I don't even Netflix and chill. I just you know, stream little women off one, two, three movies, XYZ dot RU. I like I don't think I've ever watched a movie online except from websites that directly give me viruses where now some twelve year old Ukrainian hacker live streams videos of me and it just says, Sad man cries to spy kids again. And I don't know, I, I need to start appreciating the arts and or like she's very sensual and like, yeah, I don't know. I can't stop making space noises during sex. Like, I actually don't know what space noises are, but that's what I'm doing. And I think it's, I, I think it's space. That's, I think that's the theme of our sexuality. Um, but she, you know, she has growing edges too. Um, she, like, she needs to realize that on top of being tall and on top of being Australian... I, I have to have at least, like, one other attribute, right? Like, one other thing. There's got to be something else. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but she should discover it if she wants to be in this relationship. I think part of the problem, though, is, uh, is accents. Accents do a lot of the work. <laughs> like, with this accent, I feel like when I'm talking, people are disappointed that I'm not just constantly buying rounds of shots for everyone belaying them while they're abseiling and giving them facts about wildlife. But there's other... like I think like the British accent, right? It's great for... You know, this sort of thing where they're threatening you, but you can't tell if it's a threat or a clue or a riddle you didn't know you were solving. Like, Mate, are you trying to paint your sheep purple? Are you trying to lily-ninny the, the backyard fence? I'm like, are, are, we, are we about to fight? You're always about to fight. That's what that is. You're always about to fight. Um, and the American accent, I don't know, it's just that one word, right? It's just, sir. <laughs> like, that's all you need. And that's all you need to know that you shouldn't have brought your own Shrek costume to Dreamworld because, you know, even though it's a noble way to get tips, it's, it's not for you. Um, yeah, but I feel like, I don't know, I don't want to disappoint everyone, so I've written three animal jokes just to satisfy... The narrative of this accent. The first one, um, you know, I've been looking up bears recently, and the brown bear, if a brown bear attacks you, okay, if a brown bear attacks you, you're meant to play dead, because the only thing brown bears love more than killing people is fucking theatre. Um, another one, people don't know about, oh, people do know, my, my housemates are getting really mad that I'm still using those plastic straws, even though apparently they kill turtles. Right, But the thing I'm thinking is um, how dumb of an animal do you have to be to not know you, how to use a straw even though you live in a drink? And uh, the final one, I think, uh, like Noah's Ark is really uh, poorly named because that's not like the takeaway from that story. Right? God said to Noah to go collect two of every animal and put them on an ark and to propagate the species of each of those animals. Two of every animal. Two, so two of every animal. So after everything's settled down, they're back on land. You know, mama and dada z zebra just looking at their kids going, okay, now fuck your zebra sister. God wants it. That's, that's not Noah's Ark. That's Noah's floating incest zebra zoo. Um, so those are those three. <laughs> three animal facts, but there are th some things about Australians that are legitimate stereotypes that people don't know here. For example, we're complete coffee snobs. 
um, just completely pretentious and elitist about everything to do with coffee. At home, we win these awards, and if you go into even like a small mom and dad cafe, and you know you try and order a coffee in any way other than citing the molecular structure of caffeine itself in fluent Italian, people just look at you like you're a baby asking for milk. You know, I'm just trying to get a buzz on. I'm not trying to duel Gandalf. Um, but here, it's just like I prefer the Duncan way. Just give me some of that brown boiling juice that makes me feel late for a meeting I don't have. I think the most vicious stereotype of all, though, is uh, like this idea that all Australians are just convicts. You know, just a bunch of convicts who couldn't even get away with stealing bread. Right, which is a vicious rumor. Who started that? You know, it's not, it's not uh, bread that white Australians stole. I, I just think, I don't even, it's not bread that we stole. It's, uh, it's three million square miles of indigenous land. <laughs> Which is nothing like, that's nothing like bread, right? I don't even know how you get that confused. <laughs> like, right? You couldn't, you wouldn't spread Vegemite on three million square miles of indigenous land. <laughs> It'd take all day. What, you, what, you'd spread uh, smallpox and anti-egalitarian market structures. And that's what we did. That's just a history lesson. That, um, so yeah, I think to close it out, let's have a quick review. I went over here. I, uh, I did some stuff talking about the gym because I saw a lady doing the clean and snatch. I came back. I did some material about dating, didn't I? I went okay. It's all real. It's all real about me. I, I don't usually have material about dating. So well done, Alex. And then I did stuff about being Australian. Wow. I think we did it, guys. Thank you. Give it up for your host, Audrey Moore. Matt. Matt. Matthias. Matthew. <laughs> We need you for the... Can you co please? Thank you. Uh, so, midtown. So, let me tell you something that happened yesterday. It was, <laughs> it was so embarrassing. So, last night I have a show at Broadway Comedy Club. And the whole, <laughs> the whole night that I was with, I was 20 pesos. I remember needing some money, <laughs> 100 pesos, <laughs> for my new Barbie doll. So with a tennis racket, I hit my sister on the moon. Success! Don't worry about my sister. Even without tea, she was still look pretty. <laughs> uh, I love my life. I love my life. I just enjoy it this moment. I can talk and talk and talk, even if nobody is paying attention. And I love it. Yeah, I love it. I will cry after. <laughs> but I love it right now. Uh, that's why the, when the people say that, they, oh, why you suffer for depression? Uh, uh, guys, actually, my depression is like a friend with benefits. <laughs> I don't love him. He don't love me, but he still fuck me sometimes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And nobody, nobody cares. Uh, you say, if I kill myself after the show, don't be worried about me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's a joke. <laughs> I love my life. I love my life. I'm not going to kill my life. <laughs> okay, are you ready for your next comedian? Give it out. How, how to spell Mark. I uh, know. At how to spell Mark. Even you can follow him. Thank you for announcing me as, as a comedian. I, I am triple threat. Comedy, music, break dancing, you name it. Um, being born in this city, yeah, yeah, we're, we're born with it. Uh, I'd like to just start by saying what's up to the hotel, um, the living stage. But instead of just saying it, let's sing it. Mm -hmm. Get this going. 
Don't drown in famine, natural disasters. My lady has been around for me. Kingdoms are falling, angels be calling. None of that could ever make me leave. Uh. Every time I look into your eyes, I see, yeah, you're all I need. Every time I get a bit inside, I feel it. Hotel Living Stage. Ooh, oh, I thought I'd get you. Improv. Yes, sir. Happy Friday. Welcome to the living stage. My name is How to Spell Mark. Hey, hey, happy days. Shout out to the amazing, the amazing host. And shout out to the super brothers with the super jokes. I do it, yes, sir. I go so hard. I'm from the BX like Jay Z. We go so hard. Happy Friday. Back flipping and singing on the A train. Went viral couple million things how to spell yes sir yes sir out harsh money yes sir misspell misspell missing missing i'm just improv and just freestyling just slaying the art house monique yes we house artists yes sir and i'm yes yes the first artist the smartest yes the wisest believe in your dream and believe in yes Living stage, yes, sir. Who would have thought I'd get you? Who would have thought I'd get you? Yes, sir. I'm glad we was driving by. And Monique was like, no way, there's a spot right there. We just left a spot. A, a, a promoter had um, insisted that we come out to this um, showcase um, not too far from here. And in the, the venue, including the artists and the folks that they brought, were just like kind of sitting around on their phones and just like so anti-social, but out. And I was like, okay, we gave you guys an hour. And we were, I was on my way to driving her back home to get back to Jersey. And we drove by the living space and here I am. I got one more for y'all. Thank you. Please follow us online. How to spell Mark. You can also find me at the Art House Monique online. 
Yeah, this one is an original tune. It's called How You Doing? And you can you can call this like an audition. This is my audition for the living stage. Like, you know, we like to partner up and, you know, get a night going, get an hour like the the sister that we just seen. Yeah, so I got to get me a DJ so I don't have to, you know, DJ and, oh, man, that, that's going to be the day. Dances, the crowd, you know, somebody helping with the wardrobe. Oh, I don't know how I forgot to mention, but um, next Wednesday, 9 p.m., we're going to be live at The Bitter End. The Bitter End, Bleecker Street, um, with a full live band. I'm about to sign to a major deal, and um, yeah, we got them coming out next week, Wednesday, 9 p.m., The Bitter End. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Hope your day is going fine. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Hope your day is going fine. How you doing? How was your weekend? How were you feeling? You should have a bigger smile See what I'm saying Life's like a ceiling This day I keep rising Keep your head up to the sky You got it Keep pushing Keep going Just believe Small problems I'm a giant uh, Living stage But you gotta be happy Don't worry I mean Don't worry Be happy Good days are bad Your happiness Is worthy How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Hope your day is going fine How you doing? How you doing? Doing. Hope your day is going fine Excuse me, Miss Lady I'm not trying to holler I don't mean to bother I like to compliment your style Hey, 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 hey. There goes my brother Not the same color, not the same mother But that's my brother And if you need me Just dial 1-800 That's my brother Don't frown why be down black clouds they follow the world but you gotta be happy don't worry i mean don't worry be happy good things are bad your happiness is worthy how you doing how you doing how you doing Hope your day is going fine. How you doing? How you doing? Hey. How you doing? Hope your day is going fine. Don't frown. Why be down? Black clouds, they follow the world. But you gotta be happy, don't worry, I mean, don't worry, be happy. Good days are bad, your happiness is worthy. People say, I do it. Hope your day is going. My big sister say, I do it. My big sister say, All of my people say, I do it. Hope your day is going fine. Thank y'all.
Please find me online. We're almost at 4 million viewers on Google. That's how to spell Mark. I go by. What a wonderful world it would be. I'm going to save the rest for y'all for next Wednesday at the bitter end. 9 p.m. We'll be live with a full band. 9 p.m. The bitter end. Once again, you can also get more information. That's how to spell Mark on Instagram, how to spell Mark. Just remember, my name Marquise is hard to spell, even for my father. So that's why I just go by how to spell Mark so I don't have to make that hurt himself spelling his child's name. Thank y'all. That is talent. I'm going to start to see how you doing? <laughs> How you doing? I hope that you're all right. <laughs> Something like that. I just don't sing, guys. Uh, I tell jokes. Uh, <laughs> no, but that was sad song. How to spell Mark? You should follow him, and you should follow me too. We're going to be famous yes, together. together. I'm going to open for you in your concert. Okay. You say, I have a job. <laughs> that is easy. Comedians do jokes like that. <laughs> no. Adrius 22. You can come by uh, the next Friday. Uh, no, every other Friday we are here at night. So if you want to come by, uh, you are welcome to come. Every other Friday, 8 p.m. We do. We we can put you in the lineup. So, yeah, it's cool. So, what else I can tell you guys? Haha. <laughs> I was living in Virginia with American family. Haha. <laughs> that is not funny. But I didn't have a lot of friends, and they were concerned about my social life. So they registered me to take a class at FAN and the local community bulletin board. The name of the class was Storm Memories into History. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> it's OK. After the class, my husband picked me up and asked, did you make any new friends you can hang out with? <laughs> I was that I don't know. I don't know for how long. <laughs> okay, guys, that was the show for tonight. I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, these guys were amazing. We're going to be here every other Friday night uh, for more show. So yeah, and um, help me to be famous. If you can follow me in Instagram at adrix22, I will appreciate it. Or you can look for me like a Audrey Mora and you will find me anyways. Thank you for your attention, everybody. Oh, come on, people. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm going to sign. Uh, I'm going to sign whatever you want of sign. <laughs> Don't bother me. <laughs> no, thank you so much. You've been fantastic. Uh, yeah, thank you. Love you all. Bye. Bye. Woo!